Hello, welcome to another exciting video. Uh, you know, right now I got the uh, fundamental. Of, this is a long video. Uh, popping like videos here. Um, still saying playing uh, the Roku Express, but it's not. Um. Uh, So let's uh, go ahead and find a short video to review. This is my first time actually reviewing one of Paul's videos. So um, I do like his stuff. I have I actually had uh, one of his uh, short short videos. Then no, the, this isn't about an hour long almost so this all right now third attribute we're going to cover is strength and like speed there are different types of now, i do if you guys the much you guys have to, you want to stand on you like chips this is uh this this is chris chris chips that i'll be uh, munching on here but then this is a uh, hashtag not sponsor uh these chips are very low carbs five Grams of uh, carbohydrates, 19 um, grams of protein, and sugar, uh, zero, has less than one gram. So it was, you know, what's less than one gram, I guess, a point, 0 0.5, maybe. Or, or, so it's, just, it's definitely less to one gram, and you have a shit. Eat a, a, t a ton of these to eat to get the fiber that you need. It's one gram of fiber. Um, cholesterol, cholesterol, 10 milligrams. Uh, saturated fat, 0 0.05, and total fat, 5 grams. So there's not a lot of fat. But these are the taco flavor. Uh, they, you, I don't know how, but they ever get the. The, the like a meaty taste to it too like if as you would eat the uh, I talk it's just it's, it's like it, all the flavor that comes to a taco you can imagine it in this chip right I haven't tasted the lettuce and everything. I don't know. This is my brain triggering me, but the taste of this is the uh, as far as taco goes, this really tastes like a taco. Mm. Strength. The type of strength we're looking to get is what we call isometric strength. Uh, like in Asana, when you when you touch him and lock up with his arms, she's selling, sort of feels like an iron band. It feels like you could do a chin-up on his arms. This is the sort of strength. Bruce had this type of strength. It's developed through isometrics. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the gym, and I'm going to discuss all the different types of strength with you and how to get the particular type of strength that's most conducive for what we do. In talking about strength, I want you to know that there are several different types of strength. You have power lifters. Power lifters are good at lifting a lot of weight from a static position. Then you have bodybuilders. Bodybuilders lift about three quarters of their max over and over again. This is for the aesthetics. We're not interested in that at all. Then you have swimmers. You have wrestlers. You have uh, gymnasts. All of these are different types of strength. Our definition of strength is to be able to move a body from point A to point B. What Bruce found out was the it's, uh, that's not what I'm looking Okay, this. Attracting new customers has oh, been yeah. tricky. So we claim their free business profile on Google. Yeah, now we can accept bookings, list our products, even post updates. Our free business profile helps us stand out and connect with customers on Google. The headbutt is not like you see in the movies. You're not butting head to head like two elephant seals. The headbutt is the top of your head mm. to your opponent's face. At this point, I want to just reiterate one more time why Bruce 
stress these particular tools, why he stressed this particular range. Could you imagine punching a six foot five large man in the face and getting some kind of reaction? It just doesn't work, especially if he's bent on your destruction. But if you slam the top of your head into his face. Mm. Mm. Uh. Unless his face is made of metal, that, that puzzle should still uh, feel some kind of pain. Um, but yes, I uh, agreed that a headbutt can do a lot more damage to your fist. Um, that's why you, there's also vital areas that you can attack. Then your knee into his groin, that sort of makes size and strength moot. And this is what we're trying <laughs> to do. Yeah. So again, with the headbutt, it's the top of your head to the opponent's face. When you practice, you can't practice like this because you're looking at what you're doing. So it can't be the top of your head. So you have to put your chin down to your chest and use your legs to headbutt with. It's almost like you have, you're a bull and you're bucking at the opponent's face. <laughs> and when you have the opponent in front of you, you're actually going to be grabbing the back of his neck and pulling his face into the top of your head. For a smaller man to do this on a larger man is conceivable. For a smaller man to punch a larger man is not. That's why they have weight division. So mm. when we train with a part, the and then you you see that did not have a weight division. They do now. Um, it's and then still uh look. I mean, it's amazing to watch. Partner, okay, Rich. Basically, what we want to do with the partner is just get the feel of training. So the, you have to tell your partner right away to tighten up his neck first. If he tightens up his neck, so there's no chance of colliding. When he's tightens up his neck, boom, that's what you're doing. Slowly, boom. This is the head. Now, uh, see, he's driving back the neck. Was it a? Uh, that's okay. Use if if somebody's not um they if they're relaxed and you just grab real quickly, back in the neck is okay. But what you really want is to grab them underneath the the, the hip bottom well, bottom of your head the the and that way you can come in. And have a better grip. That's why when multi clenches and you come in, you have two hands behind that, behind that, and you still have that same idea. Or you just uh, come up here and just that's more than by headbutt. You can. Don't have to grab anybody. You just go up to them and just hit. But uh, the uh, I I I'd like to uh, if I was gonna grab somebody, I would cuff cuff my hand and slap their ears with both hands and grab and go for the hit. But obviously, because that's his partner, he doesn't. And when he ha have him come back to him and train with him again. He won't do that. He's just showing how a good hip hook should look. But I am taking my head, and I'm going to pull it over the shoulder just so you can see the velocity. I'm taking my hands and I'm pulling his head. This would be into my face, but it's over the top of the shoulder. Now you tell your person, stiffen up the neck, and then boom, you do it right there. And we're not trying to put the tools together quite now, but if we were, boom, it would look something like that. That's when you start putting them together. That'll be later on in the tape. So, again, just to reiterate, if you bend the knees, put your chin down, and you're pulling your opponent's face to your head. Mm. Now, moving along to the headbutt. I've never really seen any good equipment on the headbutt, so what we like to use is the motorcycle helmet. Again, you're going to see us do this in scenarios in which you get to see combinations. Okay? But for now, the purpose of the equipment training is to get you to feel some sort of substance behind what you're hitting as opposed to just doing it in the air. So this is sort of the next stage onto the progression of finally getting you combative. You have to understand that things have to be developed in a progression. Okay, Rich? 
So all I'm really going to have Rich do in this particular take is just have him stand in front of me, and I'm going to get a feel like, oh, for the head bump. All I'm going to do is just, just kind of get that feel, change it from different angles and see the feel that I have. If it's a knee here, well, boom, and then I combine it with the head butt. So I just want you to know and feel what part of the head you're hitting with. It looks a little dangerous in the beginning. You might say, well, geez, doesn't that hurt your head? But it doesn't hurt your head as much as what it does to his face, and that's what we're looking at is that ratio. So let's give it a try. I've spent over $30 million on... That was um, fun. We have the another quick, the quick small video. The watch. Hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, do the do this uh, here. Hi, I'm Paul Vunek, and welcome to Advanced Knife Fighting. First of all, we call this tape Advanced because we're going to teach drills that we've not shown before. It is the drills that make a knife fighter. It is not the techniques. This is the first thing we have to understand. Never has there been a subject taught by so many who know so little. I see in books, I see in magazines, instructors will have you blocking a knife, having you try to disarm the knife out of midair. This is suicide. This is irresponsible. You cannot fight a knife. Get a large industrial magic marker and put it in the hand of a 12-year-old child and let her just flail at you. And you'll have lines up your groin, across your eyelids. And you're going to try to do some technique against a razor, against a man in an alley pissed off at you. So we need to understand the realities of the knife. And what we're going to do is just delineate the points to you that are most important in a knife fight. So hang with me. Now, to talk about myth number one. Trying to block a knife. Bob. Any block that Bob does, if he successfully makes the block, if I just pull away, he's cut anywhere I'm at. If I come in here, boom, boom, that's it. If I'm just looking this way, I turn around, what'd you say? The guy's cut. You can't give the limb and try to block. Mm. This was taught many, many years ago against people trying to take a knife and stick it through armor. So at that point, the thrusting of the knife, it was locked out and it was thrusted the same way they were punching in those that's, days. Yeah, that's true. People nowadays do not thrust a knife. Every technique I've ever seen in any book, any magazine, or any video has been predicated on the fact that the knife is thrusting at you and it is locked out. When you're in a knife fight, boom, a kid's just going to take a knife and flail it. It's going to retract quick like a fast jab. So you need the attributes to deal with that. You need the footwork, you need the line familiarization, you need the timing. And these things aren't just going to come, they need to come through the proper drills. So this is why we call this tape advanced knife fighting, because we're going to delineate each one of these drills for you. So before we do this, I want to talk about range. Okay, Bob, grab a knife. <clears throat> First thing we do is we discuss the three different ranges of knife fighting. Bob, you lock your knife out. His knife cannot reach my face, but my knife can reach his hand. This is called Largo Mono Range, or Long Hand Range. This is the most important range you need to know about. That is, every time he comes in to you, you're just backing up and cutting the hand. You're using this knife to, as the Filipinos would say, defang the snake. As opposed to the knife on its knife hand. Now, the next range that we come in from Largo on cutting, and stay right there. I'm, I'm going to back up a little bit because I was, I was trying to just figure out the audio, what's going on with my audio. Before we do this, I want to talk, it is the drills that make... Think, yeah, because I have audio with both, both sides. Hi, I'm Paul Vunek, and welcome to Advanced uh, Knife Fighting. When he's talking, First of all, we call this tape advanced because the most important stopped. range you need no, to know about. Side. That is, every time he comes in to you, you're just backing up and cutting the hand. You're using this knife fighting because we're going to delineate each one of these drills for you. So before we do this, I want to talk about range. Okay, Bob, grab a knife. <clears throat> First thing we do is we discuss the three different ranges of knife fighting. Bob, you lock your knife out. His knife cannot reach my face, but my knife can reach his hand. This is called Largo Mono Range, or Long Hand Range. This is the most important oh, range you need range. to know about. 
That is, every time he comes in to you, you're just backing up and cutting the hand. You're using this defend knife to, as the snake. Filipinos would say, defang. Yeah, defang the snake. Uh, that's uh, a really uh, 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 yeah, so I I know about that. Uh, um, well, training into the Filipino. Uh, the Filipino snake is just a uh, uh, a term. For Filipinos, when you teach a, you got a stick or whatever, any hands. Uh, sp uh, if you have a knife, stick, machete, uh, to really <laughs> win, like, uh, and, and, and so you aiming, you really are aiming for the hand. You're hitting the weapon hand. Uh, especially if you're the one that wants to live. Like, if you have a machete, he has a machete. One of us gotta die. Like if I have a machete, then my person who tried to kill me has a machete. One of us gonna die. My goal is to uh, to, to try uh, get my do my best is to defend that snake. So if I can, so if I can disarm him with my blade with my blade, and he's going and I'm. Going, I see him going this way, and I'm going with my uh, other uh, hand. I'm going to go the opposite and strike the this hand, the hand right here on top, uh, you know, on top right here, on the top right here, uh, anywhere in my in this hand. If I handed this hand with that blade, and if it is just a, a quick a quick hit to the hand. Uh, he's gonna open that hand up. He's not, or, or if I go or downward hard enough, my blade is hard, uh, sharp enough to cut his hand off. Most likely, uh, it, he's it, he's that my attacker would stop attacking because I hit. I did. I did. He. I did the snake. Snake, and you trained that a lot. Uh, you, uh, your, your partner, your partner will have the, the special gloves on, so you don't, uh, bust knuckles, bust the knuckles on there, because you get hit by the stick, uh, or you might use, uh, training Kali stick, and they be thrown, and that way if you get, do hit, get hit the, by the hand, that's not gonna hurt, hurt. Uh, as bad as as as, uh, as it would with a wooden stick. Uh, if uh, I've been hit uh, with wooden stick, I've been hit with a uh, a metal cane. Uh, training with uh, Guru Harris, in fact, and uh, it hurts. I hit, hit I got I hit him in the head. Uh, I said they didn't hit him in the head. So in training. Uh, especially with uh, when you use a live stick, you, you gotta really not swing 100% because uh, if if you do hit the hand or something as it hap happen, you can you can really hurt somebody uh, severely. I mean he he, he he even when he we train with. Uh, knives that are prop knives, right? He he'll uh, he never got he got me with the prop knife or anything, but I have given him got as I think got him with the uh, the stick or he uh, if because he might have the like like a machete like a prop machete a prop um. Uh, Boring not, but whatever uh, video we, we are doing together, um, he will have a prop to that blade, and because uh, if he's uh, if he's showing a a knife, a uh, lead pipe, a knife with a lead pipe demonstration, he will have a, a prop knife against the against the pipe. Or at the hands gives a pipe, or uh, a knife gives a pipe. Uh, 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 
Oh, he had the he, oh he had the pipe, and I have the prop knife a uh, uh, prop a prop knife smaller knife like 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 it's kind of like it's kind of like a like a a pocket knife a a, a butterfly knife that's smaller and he what what you could do uh mostly uh most of the time you will um. It would be me using a a a smaller weapon because it's a longer weapon, and he's in the he's in wheelchair. Uh, he teaches people uh in in his wheelchair, and he he's and he got really good knowledge, and that. But let's continue on this one. In the snake. As opposed to the knife coming in and me using a passive hand, stay right there, and then I'm trying to come in and do something else. We've got a slight structural flaw here. So the point that we're trying to make is if you're going to defang the snake, you need to do this on the first beat. So in Largo Mono range, when this man comes in, you're just backing out and cutting. Every time he comes in at any angle, you're backing out and cutting. I do not need this hand because it's not in the way. So we just keep this hand right here. And we're backing out and using this knife to cut the opponent's knife. The, the other hand that stays, uh, the hand he, he keeps stationary, uh, that also hand, uh, it, it'll be a target as well. Um, to say he, if he, this is, if, he, if he gets his hand first, then you try to, and then he, uh, he, he, he defends the snake. You, then he ends up defending just the snake. On you now you don't have no you, you can't switch hands because this hand is gone so you have to uh, p you can use the the hand that, that doesn't uh, have and you pa you can you can pass and that's where the hoop button go into I'm able to knock the that hand out and sometimes I'm, I can use a minus knife to do the to, 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 to thing the snake at the same time. I can, I see the point of if I have a choice to use my footwork to to the quickly uh uh the thing the snake then go back on and shoot for another cut. I can go here and then and then I can go here and then come back this way for a cut to the face to neck, uh, whatever, I, whatever it is, but, but the, the the point was, if you have knife with a knife, or what you know, blade with blade with a blade, and essentially, ideally, what you want to do is end the fight quickly by defending this, defending defending the snake, and and then the other cut would be like, hey. I uh, now he because now if I cut him right over here to close to the eye, I'm letting him know that next one that that could have been that, that could have been uh your throat that could have been your eye I could have cut your other eye, eye out. I'm so I'm let I'm uh the the fake snake is letting him hey uh that fight the fight is over. So I could go, but to really make sure to really get the message, uh, to, to really get the message out to him, one, and then come back into another strike, uh, but using you can use the angle one with that with that strike and pow, uh, the the and the Cali and Shrima, uh, or uh, Valenta Rock, or if you do the Serata, whatever. You keep that same form, and you are able to. Uh, you can use those eight different angles and footworks uh, uh, from those, uh, from any of those extrema, uh, fin martial arts. Uh, to and, and, and one thing about Hubud, it, it allows you to uh, knock the hand outward, and then you. It feels like I'm 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 going in, and I'm pairing. The hand out. I'm reaching the hand out so that way, if I have to, I can come in with the uh, with the oh shit, with if I'm going to go this way, so I could 
I'm, if I'm here, I'm measuring, if there's a hand right here, I'm measuring the hand out at, at the same time. At the same time, this is the same, uh, uh, at the same time, I'm cutting to the face. If I, if I had a knife. Right, that's the idea. So, if I'm and uh, that's the purpose of the secondary hand. Hand. Now, the next range that we come in from Largo Mono range is called Sumbrata range, where the knife can touch you. So, if he comes with an angle one, and I try to block this, but for some reason, on my cut, I miss, well, I'm going to get cut. So, this is why we employ the checking hand. So, as soon as Bob comes in, boom, that's where the check comes in. Any angle he comes, you have this hand to check. This is the checking hand. If we don't use this checking hand, again, if I miss here, I'm going to catch it. But if we try to put the checking hand in out in Largo Mono range, you can end up getting your hand cut. So that's the first thing we have to understand is the delineation of the two ranges, Largo Mono to Sombrato. And now there's just one last range, and that is your clinch range. This is a range where a headbutt could come in, a knee, an elbow, this is called who bud range. So this is who bud. Right from here. This is sombrata range. Just flow with me a little bit. This is sombrata range. We're going to go through all these different blocks with you. And this is Largo Mono range when we're out in this. Boom. Just moving around like two kickboxers. So this is the point. We need to know all three ranges. So hang in with me and take some notes on this. Before we get into the meat of this tape, I want to cover myth number two, and that is how do you hold a knife? I've seen entire books on how to hold a knife. That's absurd. The only thing that counts is timing, footwork, spatial relationship, coordination, and heart when you're in a knife fight. Right. If your thumb is here or if your thumb is here, that is the least important thing. If it's a four-inch knife or a six-inch knife or an eight-inch knife, this is not important. We're focusing on the wrong things. Mm. You'll hear mm. people say, well, you really know if a guy knows how to fight with a knife because he'll carry it like this. That's absurd. <laughs> Carrying a knife like this, the only possible advantage it has is you're hiding the knife. You're concealing it. That's it. Right. Yeah. Other than that, when you're out moving around with a man, those attributes are still in play. That's like saying you really know if a guy knows how to shoot a gun because he'll have it hidden in his shirt. Makes the same amount of sense. If you drop your knife and you look in this direction and you happen to pick it up, and you have it in a false grip, well then use it in this grip. Otherwise, just grab the knife in the most natural way you can and move around. And remember the principles. And the most important principle is that we defang the snake on the first beat. We use our knife to cut our opponent's hand. So this is going to be the very first technique I'm going to show you. We're going to use the terminology block, although it's not a block. It's a cut. And the first block we're going to use is called a roof block. Okay, Joe, let me borrow you. There are five angles of attack. This is a one, this is a two. So a roof block is simple, a, a, looks like something you would see in karate. The angle is, but imagine having a, uh, I, I saw some, I, I did videos on this, and it's the same concept. A roof block is this, going up. And your blade, uh, it's constant. And you'll cut it. You can also cut somebody going up, and then you go down this way. This is a three. This is a four, and this is a five. So these are going to be the angles I'm going to be referring to. You can break it down into twelve or twenty. For right now, five is just. So twelve is uh, so you got one, two, then you go down to three, four. And as he said, the five angle was the thrust. Then you got a six, uh, seven, uh, eight. eight oh, sorry, eight is down to the to the to the legs. Uh, so it's nine. Go back up. Go back up to the ten with it up to the eyes, to the uh, other eye. Those are the angles. So he so he all he does is show you the five angles. The five angles is is to the to, to the angle one towards the this area area, area here that'd be the angle one, angle two is the same 
direction, but the other side. Uh, and then you have angle two, which is uh, hitting uh, the the arms or the ribs or the the lower area. Area. Then you have the angle four, which is also the same, the opposite direction, the opposite side. And then you have. Um, and I mean, I mean, when I say angle three, that means you. Know, that also means hitting the hand, the finger, the snake. Uh, you have uh, five when you come in. Uh, you come in with a with with a, with a thrust. Then you have angle angle six and seven. Six and seven is uh, here's here's six here's seven. That's it. I, I, if I'm going through here, bam, six going to that that this viral area seven go over here to this other viral area uh special it's a thrusting motion right there um and it's also uh i mean it's you know now granted the one also could be right here I can I can hit you in my in the neck. I'm not gonna in this angle. Doesn't matter. I can angle one. Angle one. I'm heading to this direction. Same with angle two. Right? Doesn't matter. Fine. Joe comes at me with an angle one. I'm gonna use my knife to touch his hand first. Yeah. So, uh, with the, that's like I said, the root block coming up with the blade stick. What we having? the end of that is what you want uh in this ca case <coughs> he's uh catching his arm just like uh the hand i'm gonna show you uh if you're doing uh the rising block front party and you're grabbing the rest from the front punch and then you come up to throw that punch then that's you know that's the same concept but with the knife you have the blade because the blade is give you a standard part of here you have the same that and now still being a block as a cut to here and you hit the thing in the snake doing that way That's the point. That's the most important point. As this comes in, this hand's going to check. So this motion is called a roof block. Yeah, so, because he, he said call it a check. It's, so it's sweeping away. He, you, are, you can use the hair. And this is the uh, application. Where your hair and you come in. You sweep it away, or you, as he called it, checking the hand. You've... And I and the uh, he 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 he's able to cut the hand, sweep it. Now he can go into the eyes, to the leg. He also go for the neck. What if he's open? What if, what if he what if he's created open? He can he can go for it from there. I'm zoning out on a 45, and I'm cutting his hand on the first beat. Not to be misconstrued with this, which is doing nothing. But when I use the knife, boom. Now, why am I using my left hand? Because it is the checking hand, because we're in some broader range. Joe was coming in deep enough in which I needed my left hand. Had I have not used it, the knife could have thrust it to my neck. So the first move I want you to practice at home is you take your angle one, feed it, and your partner just step out on a 45, Raise your knife and kind of stretch, and we call this a roof block. Okay, let's play with that. As a former CIA officer, I have a very important. That's all I got for today on this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, share. Uh, is uh, love him, hate him. He got some some of the stuff he shows are very, very helpful. I don't, uh, um, you know, the the end. They they are good. So those they are something you could, you could learn. 
on your own. I mean, that's one thing about YouTube. You you can learn anything by yourself. All right, until next time, guys. I'm out.